So I'm going to, I'm Jennifer Drinka. I'm the library director. I'm going to turn it over to Tom Hausman, our board president, to, to get started whenever he thinks it's time. I, I think it's time. Okay. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for attending the uh, so public thank you over. I'm sorry. Thank you for uh, joining this public information meeting. And uh, you are all aware, I, I presume, that uh, we are going for referendum in November uh, to expand and to renovate the library. And uh, there are a number of people who will be trying to explain things to you. And then we will have like a question and answer period uh, later. So. Uh, should I introduce uh, members of the, uh, that I see? Okay, uh, you've already met Jennifer Dranka, our library director, and Becky Jacobson, our uh, person who deals with the public, and uh, Ann Kasich, who uh, sat in the seat that I now sit in <laughs> uh, as, the, as the library's uh, uh, president of the Board of uh, Trustees. Uh, we have Rick McCarthy from GC uh, Architects who have come up with the architectural renderings and costs for this project. And uh, I, I, I see Amy down in the basement. Okay. And uh, she is uh, our, our, our de deputy uh, director here at the library. Uh, downstairs also are Scott Zalatoris, Angie Zalatoris. Scott is our the Board of Trustees uh, treasurer. And uh, I, I don't see a lot of pictures, but uh, I see that there's a lady named Joris, who I don't know. Uh, I, AJ Jacobs, who I don't know, Chad Holbrook, I, who I don't know, Kim, Nikki, Keith's pad, Susie Glow. Um, I, did I catch everybody who's on, on this meeting so far? Uh, Ryan LaFave is down here with us too. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, he, he is a, a local Antioch boy who is a part of the uh, architectural firm, uh, GC, uh, that Rick is uh, the, the main architect for. So without my monopolizing all the time, uh, Jennifer, you want me to turn this over to, to Rick to explain the whole project? Okay, yeah. take it away, Rick. Okay, I will do that. Thank you, Tom. And thank you everybody for coming to uh, see this tonight and to learn about your, your library and what the plans are. And I'm Rick McCarthy. I lead the studio uh, library design studio at Studio GC Architects. And as Tom said, I'm working with Ryan LaFave, who's from Antioch. And Ryan was nice enough to let me work with him on this project. And it's great to have somebody local representing the firm on, on here. So it was just a, a great thing. I'm gonna take the screen if I can. Let's see, it looks like I can here. Okay, give me a minute. I need to find the right windows. There we go. All right. Is that showing up, Jennifer? Yes, looks good. Yes. All right. Well, I often like to start the presentation with this image just because it's such an iconic image. This is the library at Trinity College in Dublin, the long room, and it's like the iconic image of what people think of as libraries, all the traditional things there, the books and the wood and everything, and it's a beautiful space. And that aspect of libraries is going to stay with us, all right? It's, but at the same time, we have to understand that the way people get information is changing, and it's evolving, and, 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 and we need to the library needs to keep abreast of these changes if it's gonna remain a relevant institution to the community. And that's what this project is about. I'm uh, from Elgin originally, and I was president of the board at Gail Borden Library, a very successful library there. I can't take credit for that, although I wish I could. 
when I was uh, on the board, we built a, a big addition to our library and I stayed out of the design process for the most part because I couldn't be architect on it. And, but I did tell the architects that we were working with that I really wanted to have a place for events to happen in the front of the library. And so we built a rotunda as part of our addition there. And they, the staff came up with great things, a space exhibit and a Lincoln exhibit, and local history and such. And those numbers there were how many people actually came to see some of the exhibits there. And it was really a hopping place and is. But the one that really was an eye opener to me was the day they had on the, the space exhibit. One Saturday, they had some, um, a couple of astronauts come to Elgin and talk to the kids. It was a great event, the kids loved it. But even better than that, during the event, they engineered a radio link with the space station. And when it came up over the horizon, the kids in Elgin got to ask astronauts in orbit questions live, real time. And that's a young man talking to an astronaut on the space station. And it occurred to me then that these are the kind of things that change people's lives. And that is the kind of thing that libraries are doing now. And it really opened my eyes and it really changed the way that I thought about libraries and library design. So there's the, there's the future, okay? Let's talk about the past for a second. Like I said, I'm from Elgin and I like old books. Um, and I have in, in my life, personal library some of the old Elgin City directories and there's a cover of one from the 1915 version and it's a fun old book, you know, and it's got interesting things in it. But one of the interesting things about it to me is the first 10 pages or so were all the organizations that existed in Elgin in 1915. And it goes on and on and on and some of them you've heard of many of them you haven't heard of. But one thing they almost all have in common is that they're almost all gone now. And there was a whole layer of society where people used to get together, see their neighbors and such, and it's not there anymore. Back in those days, houses had front porches and people used them. They would talk to their neighbors. Then we got these and people moved inside. They didn't see their neighbors anymore. And now we've got this. We've got kids upstairs by themselves in their bedrooms surfing the internet. And we've really lost something. And so part of our concept about library design and what we want to bring to the communities is that the library can in, in effect be in the front porch of the community, a place that people come and get together. And that's one of the driving forces behind what we're, what we're doing here. And people are coming to the library for all sorts of things. You know, there's um, book club meetings, um, book club meetings, there we find one there, uh, musical presentations, and just tons of different things. And, it's, and if, you haven't, if you don't go to the library very often, you're probably not aware of the children's events and all these things that go on, the teaching and the art classes and such. And it's kind of amazing uh, traffic that the library gets when you think of the size of the community. Jennifer, I mean, how many people do we actually come through the doors there? I'm gonna actually pose that question to see if anybody in our audience tonight wants to guess. How many people do you think come to the library per month on an average month? Any guess? Nobody wants to go out on a limb. How many? How many come to the library in an average month? 5,000. How many come in a month? I heard 5,000. Okay, I won't keep you waiting anymore. 300. 300, 5,000. The answer is actually well over 10,000 people come through our doors every month. So um, it's kind of a surprising number because when you think about it, when you come to the library, you're coming to use the library in your own way, whether you're going to the computer lab to apply for a job, whether you're going to story time with your children, coming to pick up a book, coming to read the newspaper, coming to a program, so many different reasons people come to the library and it's meant to be a really personalized experience for you. But if you were to look around the building, you would see all these different people using it in so many different ways. So um, in our busy months, it's more like 14,000 and during times when we've been um, only open about 40% of our hours due to COVID, we were still seeing about 4,000 people. We've still been seeing about 4,000 people a month. 
So kind of an interesting poll that was done by Gallup in December um, asked people about what they do for recre recreation. And they found that people go to the library twice as often as they go to the movies and more than twice as often as they go to live sporting events, live music, theatrical events, national parks, museums, casinos, amusement parks, and zoos. So regardless of their age, their gender, their economic status, Americans spent more time at the library in 2019 than any other recreational location. Which is, which is pretty amazing, really. And it shows the importance to the community of this institution and, and how many people, and you can see it with our own, with our own gate count here. So it's, a, it's an amazing place doing lots of amazing things. And a lot of those things that Jennifer mentioned, you know, as I said, the books are going to remain important and the center of the library, but all of these other uses now is, are some of the things that we need to start looking at with library to make it a well, that, that well-rounded experience. Because if we look at a library, a 21st century library, there's really a balance of four qualities, okay? All the traditional part that you, most of us or many of us grew up with the learning. And now though, almost really in the books and just as importantly is, is creative activities, access to technology and con social connection, seeing other people in the community. And that has really changed. When I first started designing libraries, which is about 30 years ago, we really kind of designed them as places to hold lots of stuff, you know, mostly books. And now we're really designing them at places that create experiences and the books and learning are one of those experiences but there's so many more things that we're looking at now and that's what this is about to get that well-rounded library that will serve more people in the community. So um, we look at some library statistics before we start a project just to, so we kind of see where the library stands now and I'll just show you a couple of those just just so you understand some of the background. The first is let's look at the size of the library. This is a peer library assessment where we looked at like 30 or 40 peer libraries and every one of those little dots shows a peer library. And on the left there, it says library size by population served. And the average of that is that purple line there. Right now, the existing library is below average, not crazy below average, but below average. After our improvements and our modest addition to the library, we will be a little bit above average but as, as the community grows over the next 10, 15 years, we will be back pretty much exactly on that average line again. So, you know, whenever we do public jobs, somebody says they're building a Taj Mahal. This is not a Taj Mahal. This is a building that will be appropriate size for, for, your, for your community. Um, one of the most important rooms in libraries these days, and things, are things that are on offer, the small group meeting rooms. They're used all the time. And it's the number one thing that library clients typically ask us for. Say, we need more small group meeting rooms. They get used for quiet study. They get used for tutoring. They get used for business meetings and a ton of things. And you can see here on the peer assessment, we're well below the number of small group meeting rooms that uh, should be on offer. And if we look at the use of the ones that we've got, it's way below average. And uh, partially because we have few of them. And then the ones that are there are very dated, they're small, they're dark, they're for the most part, not very nice rooms and they don't get used. So that's gonna be something we're definitely going to be looking at there. And the number of card holders. As busy as the library is, there are people in the community who we're not touching yet. And I believe that since the library is doing such a great job now with the collection management and moving the books, it really is those other newer aspects of library service that we're not reaching. And that shows up in the card holders and the annual number of visits per capita. So we believe that as we make the library more well-rounded, we will reach more people and get even more popular, make the library even more popular than it, than it currently is. Uh, we also, we all look at the uh, population demographics a little bit just to see who we're working with. And this is uh, the age distribution and the library district is the gold colored lines here, okay? And it's pretty amazing. It really jumped out and looked at this. Children, teens and tweens, and essentially the parents of those teens and tweens. So when we're working with the, with the clients, you know, with you in the library and such, that means something to us. You know, we see especially the number of children and teens and tweens, and we want to make sure that we're giving new services that will respond to those needs. And it's amazing right now, 
even though we don't have a dedicated teen room in the library yet, the library is currently number one in Lake County for teens and teen programs. That is success, okay? And what we wanna do is build on success. If it's already this popular with teens, we wanna get more of them in there. It's obviously a place they're clamoring to come to. So that's the demographics. As we start looking at what we wanna provide, and I'll show you what's an addition and what's not in a moment here. We wanna provide different environments for people who come to the library. Um, you know, there's the cozy, quiet library environment that, that, that has always been there. But for children's areas now, we're looking for th places that are more brighter, more natural light, and more fun. This is the children's side, cozy areas, quiet reading areas and social reading that are cozy, a tutoring area that's cozy, a kind of area, uh, we call it business casual as far as the way that we'll see them, that will cater to small businesses and computing and such and a spot that's for the teenagers and something that's a little edgier there because they don't want to be with the cozy adults. They want to be edgy teenagers. So those are the kind of environments that we're looking at providing for you. So if we look at the plan, we'll show you a few things that are in it. Now, this is the library floor plan and the blue areas are the spots that we are expanding on the library. We're infilling the colonnade that's out in front. That's this right here and then doing a little addition out to the west, or up to the east of the library there that'll have the teens and the small business area there. And if we zoom in on that a little bit, in the children's area, we're going to be able to increase the space and give some more space that'll be dedicated to early learning. And that's a, 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 something that's becoming increasingly important in library design. We want to get the children in there where they're really young and give them a place to be there with their parents also be doubling the size of the children's activity room. You've got imaginative children's librarians. They will be able to use every square foot that we give them in the library. I have no, no doubt about that. On the other side, I have a social reading area that will have a, a Keurig coffee machine. It's not a, a, a coffee shop like some people are saying. It's a area with a fireplace in it and nice chairs for reading and the Keurig coffee machine there. And they like set a fireplace. A teen area here with things like shared computing and such, uh, and places to do homework and meet and meet with their friends. You see a little note here. We're providing the light well to uh, areas below. We're providing a couple of light wells to bring a little bit of natural light to the lower level, which is something it doesn't have right now. It'll make it a much nicer space. This small business kind of high tech area there with better furniture for computers a genius bar type thing where people who bring their own laptops and such want to work off that and small group meeting rooms. There would be glass fronted rooms there that have um, um, high tech, you know, uh, screens on the wall that you'll be able to connect to and such. And they will be used and predict essentially all the time once they're built and an area here for tutoring and, and, and more quiet study. So that's the, the main level on the low. Um, and, and you can see that you're looking at the overview here, really somebody, everybody in town is getting something out of this. The, the children's spaces, the quiet reading spaces, the teen, small business support, small meeting group meeting rooms and tutoring. Everybody will be, can be touched by what's going on here. And the lower level, we're going to be in, uh, improving the meeting rooms by quite a bit, expanding them. And so can be either one large room or a divisible meeting room. And we're providing a maker space, which we're calling it the studio. And that is a space that could be where you learn hands-on things. It could be everything from uh, 3D printing to oil painting to knitting. It doesn't matter what it is. It's things that your creative activities there. But one of the things we're doing, which I think will be really great for this particular use, is that we're putting it adjacent to one of the meeting rooms and providing a wall there that can open up. And what we'll be able to do then is have somebody teach something like 3D printing from this room to the group here. And then they'll be able to do a breakout and come in the studio from that room and actually do hands-on what they just learned during the class. And again, just like with the children's activity room, the staff is going to be able to come up with a ton of great things here for you to learn in that and great activities. And it'll just make the it'll make, just make it that much nicer down there. So I'm, I'm really particularly excited about that, that feature of, of the library. So as far as what we're actually adding to the library, I showed you in plan, 
Okay, here's the, here's the library building. It's got the original library here from 1970. The edition, last edition was in 2001, just about 20 years ago. The infilling the colonnade there, where since we're infilling it, we'll be building out a, a canopy to protect people from rain as they walk up to the library. And here's the addition off to the east here with the teen area and such in it. So that shows how we're how we're actually changing changing the building there. So from the outside, uh, we're keeping pretty much in the context of what you already have there. We'll be giving more light, more windows. You're gonna get more light in the library, which we think is really important. But as far as like the teen edition and the infill there, it'll fit in with the context of what you've get, you know, what's going on there already. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be a, a perfect fit there. So, so that's from the exterior, what it's gonna look like. And we got one special feature that I'm excited about as well. By the front door, one of the things we're looking at is book lockers. And what these are is if you, if you reserve a book at the library, you'll get a choice when you do it, like online. And you say, I want to pick it up at the library or I want to pick it up in the locker. And the nice thing about the locker, a couple of nice things, in days of things like COVID and such, if some people may want to have a really low contact way to get books, I don't, you know, I don't want to go in, I'm at risk or whatever, you can do it via, via the locker. And the other thing it does is it'll be open or available 24 hours a day. So if your work schedule or family schedule doesn't align with library schedule, you'll be able to go any time of day or night. You'll put your library card in or punch in a code, depending which system we go in, one of the doors will pop open and there will be the stuff that you asked for from the library. So it just makes it available to more people at more times. So what's it going to look like? We're just in a, the schematic design phase now. So the general looks were, you know, the colors and stuff haven't all been selected yet, but at least we can show you yet generally what it'll be like. So here's the, uh, the fireplace reading area and, and coffee bar here. And coffee bar essentially is like that, so that, that Keurig machine. But we'll have some comfortable seating. I took some of the seats out in this view just so you could see the, um, the, the architectural bit better. Comfortable seating daylight, the fireplace there, and, uh, and access to some coffee. So fireplace reading area. Children's area, again, not all the furniture is in here for this view, but this is the expanded area here. So much more light, much better views coming in, much more square footage for little ones to do things and for library staff to provide services for those little ones. And on that wall on the right, uh, we want to do some kind of feature that the kids will like and remember. And right now, one of the things we're looking at is having little nooks there that the children will be able to come with books or whatever or with a friend and crawl into them. Kind of house shaped right now is what we're showing. Crawl into them. Kids love this little spots they can crawl into. And we'd like to give it to them, but we won't need a place where you can see what's going on. And so we're looking at little wall nooks for them to go in. And I, that this was this is the kind of thing that they're going to remember from their library experience when they when they when they get older there and just something that's fun. Here's the small business area, business support and computing. So about computer tables, and in the background there, you see the small group meeting rooms with this uh, wall-mounted screens and such, and people meeting, glass facing outwards there. You get more natural light in it and such. And here's the genius bar, the Apple type genius bar here on the left for those who bring their own computers. And if you were standing right here and if you turn around and look behind you, you'd be looking into the teen area. And this is, you know, conceptual right now, but looking at something with maybe some different colors, the slightly edgy look that the teens are going to want, uh, shared computing with the screen there and space to meet with your friends, do homework and such in the teen collection. So. You know, with all those teens coming to the library, the least we can do is give them their own space. And this can be for activities and such as well. So I think this will be, like all these other ones we're talking about, I think it'll be particularly well used, honestly. They will, they will love it. If you want downstairs, come down the stairs in the existing library. You've still got a collection on the left there. Here is the studio, the maker space there. Again, we'll probably have some glass there so people can kind of see the things that are happening in there and let it advertise itself a little bit. Is a service desk. We're looking at service desks that are smaller, a little bit more nimble now, and that might be an example of one. And if you were there and you went around the corner, you would go into the meeting room. And so here's the meeting room, the double side with the, with the wall not uh, with the wall not closed there. So you see it there. 
And one of, I mentioned bringing natural light into the, into the lower level. At the end of the meeting room, there are skylights back there. So you will get some natural light when you're downstairs there. And it'll be just a much more pleasant environment to be in, much more professional and better amenities for doing presentations and talks and learning. And you see off to the left there, that's the uh, doors leading to the maker space that could teach to this part of the room there. So, so, um, you know, it's a lot of exciting things going on. We're looking to get the most bang for every buck here. And as I said before, to really give everybody in town something out of this project. So what's it gonna cost? The overall project cost when everything is wrapped up together is about $9.6 million. And out of that 9.6, about 1.6 is devoted to upgrading infrastructure, mechanical systems and lighting and things, things that have to be done anyway. Whether or not the referendum passed, you still, we're, we're still gonna be into it for 1.6 eventually. And we ran the numbers of what it meant to the average taxpayer in town. And frankly, I was pretty surprised in a good way when, when I saw the number and for, the average uh, house is somewhere, you know, 200,000 plus or minus, maybe plus a little bit in town. The cost for that on your tax bill and your property tax bill would come out to about 14 cents a day. And so, you know, you think about, you know, what in the world can you buy for 14 cents a day? Well, in this case, 14 cents a day really gets you the world and information and the, the world of experience. And so it's a pretty, pretty darn good, pretty, I think a pretty uh, good deal here. So. And just to keep in context there, the, uh, just to show you the pub, you know, the library's portion of your tax bill, this would be your overall property tax bill. The library uh, in total is under 3% of it, just so you can see where it lays compared to colleges and school districts and things like that. So we're looking at something for everybody. It comes okay. out at a cost, I think is pretty good. And, uh, and bridges. So, so. I think we had a question maybe. Oh, sure, sure. Was there a question? Or maybe somebody just said something. There'll be time for questions here in a minute. You know, I, on this screen, I'd like to just chime in with one thing, Rick, that yeah. I've been getting a lot of questions about from people is that the, the library, we are a separate independent district, just like the school district. We are not part of the village. Um, and we rely pretty much solely on property taxes where other, other um, of like the village does collect income, um, I'm sorry, sales tax. So the library, we're our own body, our own, we have our elected board and we are all of Antioch Township, a little bit of Fox Lake and part of Newport Township. So we have a little over 26,000 people. So just, I've been getting questions mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, yeah, and under 3% of your, your total tax bill. So, so that, is the big picture and the project, the whys and wherefores and the what we're doing here. And I said, I'm with Studio GC and we're just pleased as anything to be working with you on this. And I think, are we gonna open it for, in case there's any questions, Jennifer? Is that what happens now? Yes. So I'll leave the screen up for a minute in case we need to go back to anything there. Is there any questions for, for us or for Jennifer or for the board here? Uh, in case this is the this is Tom Hausman again, just in case uh, anyone was wondering, uh, why did we come up with this? Well, three years ago, this this past summer, we did a survey of our patrons, and it turned out to be qu quite an eye opener. Uh, it showed us how well we were doing, but it also showed us the, the things that people were seeing. Uh, and in other libraries and, and thought we, they could make, we could make Antioch's library an even better one. And so from that uh, survey, uh, a lot of the things that are uh, in this proposal are, are what came from our patrons. We didn't uh, dream this all up out of the clear blue. And though it's been a, a minor little headache, people say, you're turning it into a coffee shop. No, we're not turning it into a coffee shop. And what do you need a fireplace for? Well, it's a little bit of ambiance. And if you consider the entire total cost of this project, that's a very small portion of it, okay? And 
since we want a, a nice place to gather, uh, to read and, and perhaps chit chat and have a cup of coffee, the fireplace uh, gives that ambiance. So, uh, but mo most of the, the cost is gonna go into uh, the mechanical things of the library. We need new rugs, we need new, a new paint job, the, the children's area is extremely important in, in, a, in a community like ours, as well as the teen center, the small business thing. Uh, and a lot of the seniors have complained that, why is the fiction all downstairs? So we're bringing the fiction upstairs and we're taking the research downstairs. So we think this is a fairly good bargain considering uh, the cost of, of everything else. And we're, as we, I think Rick and Rick uh, also pointed out, we're looking to the future. You know, if, if you know, there, there's a, a little saying something about exhale the past, inhale the future. So that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, th th this is, this is a, a public library. This belongs to the people who live within the district. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to Rick. It doesn't belong to Jennifer. It belongs to everybody. And, and that Tribune article that uh, was, was done uh, by a uh, 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 survey back at the end of uh, 2019 demonstrated the importance of libraries within communities. Uh, if you're looking to attract people to your town, having good schools and good libraries are one of the two big factors that people consider. So this was uh, something that we mulled over for a while. We, we put together a, a committee to decide uh, what, whether we could expand or not. And uh, we decided that we probably could. And so we interviewed three different architectural firms and. Uh, we chose Studio GC at the end of the process, and uh, it was uh, fortuitous that uh, Ryan Lefebvre, who is a, 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 a former resident of Antioch, had just joined the firm, and so this is one of his first gigs, and we're certainly happy that, uh, that he's been, been, been a part of this. Uh, so. Uh, the board the board voted unanimously to go ahead with the uh, referendum uh, and we are of all different uh, backgrounds and, and uh, you know occupations uh, none of us is gets paid to be on this particular board we do it uh, as our civic duty and uh, we have to be elected to do this and uh, I'm in my 13th year on the board and my third year as uh, president, and Kikasik, what, what was the person who was board president before me, and uh, she, she uh, was a wonderful guide uh, to this, uh, this library. So anyone who now wishes to, to ask us questions will be glad to answer any questions, and uh, it, it's important that people understand because of state laws, we are not allowed to ask you to vote for something or to vote against something. Uh, only uh, people who are citizens can encourage people to vote one way or the other. Uh, so we're, we're just trying to present what the project is and uh, why we think it's important to the community uh, but it's up to you, the voters, to decide whether uh, you agree with us or not agree with us. And we certainly urge you to vote. V vote either yes or no, but vote. It, it, it's part of your, your uh, responsibility as a citizen in a democracy. End of commercial. <laughs> so is there anything that we can, that we can, any questions that we can answer for you? I think Amy has something from the Eid room. Okay. Yeah, we had a question down here, which was, um, if the referendum doesn't pass, would we still do the 1.6 million 
and improvement. No. I can, I can address that a, a little bit. Um, there are some repairs that have to be made. This past year, there were a lot of things we had to do to the HVAC system. And so going forward, it's something that we're going to have to factor in. And there's repairs that have to be made, just like you have to do to your homes. That 1.6 million, um, we're going to have to spend it on some repairs to the building. The roof is literally starting to cave in. Part of the roof is from 1970. It didn't get replaced. So there's some repairs that we have to do no matter what. But that comes out of our operating budget. Yes. So no, no extra money to pay for these things. All right. So. Right. But it, yeah, if it doesn't pass, we'll have to find a way to do that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. If it does pass, what, what is the projected start date, do you think? Well, if we um, if if it passes, okay, so that'll be in in November. Uh, the drawings and all, you know, the uh, permitting and drawings and everything probably will take about uh, f five months to do, mm -hmm. plus or minus, and that puts us, you know, in in April sometime. So ideally, we would be uh, bidding in April or May, um, and so starting construction hopefully in time to be uh, all weather tight and everything before uh, with the addition before any cold weather starts and then uh, completing you know in in the winter sometime probably depending on how the weather was and such so that's the gen that's a general schedule there uh, 2021 the winter but perhaps ready by the end of 2021 also uh, part of uh, the project, uh, once all the uh, blueprints and all these things are done, uh, we, we have to go to a, a, through a bonding agency. And the bonding agency then will try to find a financial institution that will cover these bonds. And then, uh, the, then the, 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 the uh, county then will put us on the rolls to collect the money that we need over the next 20 years. So this is not something you have to pay for, you know, off the top of your heads. You know, it's a gradual thing uh, as most taxes are. So we're looking to the future, folks. So hopefully a, a little more than a year from now, we can have this, this project done. Yep. So I have a question. <laughs> Is there anything that the people are on here, you know, whether they're in the building or online that particularly excited you about the project? I'm excited because my kids and my wife there are all the time. <laughs> um, and my, my, my son plays baseball at the baseball field just up the hill. So we're, we're at, we're next to the building uh, three, four times a week. So wonderful. It would be, it would be a great, Great addition, great uh, reimagination of the building for the community, for sure. Oh, we have a note from AJ. I love the kids' nook idea. My little guy loves those at other libraries. Good. I said I'd like one for adults. That would be fun. <laughs> I'm to sit in a nook and read. <laughs> <laughs> Build it in your own house, Jennifer. Okay. <laughs> And he said, next to the fireplace, please. Yes, <laughs> that would be, yeah, okay. you know. You, 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 Jennifer, I think you need a she shed. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know, I, I, I want to just add uh, anecdotally, it's kind of funny when, you know, some people will say things about the fireplace or why do we have that. One of my other jobs right now, and I've worked on, uh, is remodeling a, uh, uh, renovating a Carnegie library and I've worked on several of those. And they all had fireplaces. And this is a 1904 building. And it, they didn't actually need it for heating. It was the same thing. It was to give the place people a place to gather around and be with neighbors in front of something cozy. So it's not a new idea. And in addition to that, uh, uh, we, we've discovered over the last 10 or so years that uh, the library has become a community center. OK? And it is the one place in the entire town where whether you're one or 101, you can go and find something to do or, or you know, 
uh, something to do, also something to read, something to see. Uh, you don't have to go to the video store. We got all the latest movies. You don't have to go to the bookstore and pay $30 for a book. We got all the latest books. So if you bought two books at a library, at a bookstore, that would be your more than that $50 a year uh, if you own a $200,000 house. So I think it's a terrific bargain. And as long as it's here, why not use it? Yeah. So any other, any other questions or things that particularly excited you about the project? I definitely like all the like defined spaces. Because it definitely it allows for extra programming. So if the teens have their own space, then they're not interrupting any adult programming that may be going on. You can kind of use use your spaces for multiple events at the same time, and then everyone's having that defined space as well. I think is very nice um, and just super helpful, so that people kind of feel like they fit in, like at their library as well. Like there's a space that fits for sure. Yeah, I think, and you know, that uh, that's a good point because right now, because there's not so many spaces for those events to happen in the library, they'll get uh, different users. They're, everybody's competing for these same spaces now, and this will ease that quite a bit and let more things, like you say, happen at one time. Is, is it possible for us to know who is speaking? Oh, it was Angie Delacour. Oh, okay. Hi, Angie. Thank you. Anything else? Well, we're, we're always here if you have questions oh, we here have? at the library. Yes, looks like we have another question. Um, can I talk? Can I, can I say what excites me as a staff person? Yes, yes. Is that okay? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm extremely excited. Um, some of the comments I've heard about all the wide open space that these plans provide and as the marketing communications person, I do a lot of the large event programs for the entire community here. And what these large spaces mean is that we can evolve just about any space in the library to provide for a large event program with this design. And that just thrills me to death because just to be able to put this computer and this, this presentation on the main floor we had to put all of our furniture into the boardroom to make room for it. And um, these plans will provide for movable stacks, uh, much easier movable furniture, furniture that will fit into a large event program. So I'm, I'm, that's what excited me the most about the entire program, the entire process of it. And that programming is, is amazingly important to libraries now. It's one of the key things that is going on. And if anything that we can do to make that better and easier and a better experience, I think is a good thing. I think as long, along with what Chad said, uh, most parents and, and even my, myself with my granddaughter, uh, I've, you know, she grew up <laughs> partly in this library, okay? Uh, and, and, and she, you know, if we say, let's go to the library, she says, good. Mm -hmm. right. kids, kids need that. They, they need to get away from their screens. Yeah, yeah I have to say, you know, just uh, I grew up in Antioch here coming to this library and I'm sitting in my office now. And if you look over there, that area is where the old front door used to be. <laughs> And I'm just, I'm so proud to be a part of this library and to be able to give back to the community that really shaped me. So, yeah, but, and I think to myself, we've been around, it'll be a hundred years next year. And I just, it feels really good to be a part of something that's been such a staple in our community and to see, you know, another hundred years where we'll be. Yeah. And I think, you know, being a senior myself, I mean, I'm 79 years old, uh, but I really believe in keeping active and being a retiree, I spend a lot of my hours uh, every uh, day, every year, uh, doing uh, what I call volunteer work. I'm a volunteer for 50 years with the PMNL Theater. I 
I volunteer with the, uh, and, and I'm a member of the Antioch Rotary Club, as well as uh, being on, on the board of the, this particular institution. And uh, it's a great way, you know, a lot of people retire from something, but I decided in my own life, I wanted to retire to things, okay? So th th this is a way of getting involved in your community. And I'm certainly glad that I did that. And uh, I'm glad that we, 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 we found the uh, moxie to go ahead with uh, the, to uh, hire uh, G GC Studio or Studio GC, I'll get it straight one of these days, uh, uh, to come up with what we consider to be an excellent plan for our circumstances. And we're not asking for the moon. <laughs> As he said, we're, we're not going to build a Taj Mahal here. Uh, we are going to build a, a working library that will be a benefit to the community if the voters say yes. And it's still up to you, the voters, to decide whether what, what steps we'll need, need to take in the future. Thank you. So if, if, if you, any of you come up with a question after this tonight that you really want to know about the project and it is with our, deals with the architectural end, just uh, feel free to get in contact with Jennifer and she can get anything to us and we're happy to, happy to talk to you about it at any time. So. Yes, and the library is back open again now for greater hours. We're open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 10 to 5 Friday and Saturday, 1 to 5 Sunday. So you could stop in, send me an email. My contact information is on the website. And a lot of more information about the building project is there too. So if some of the things you get to glimpse today, if you want to look at them in more depth, you can go to our website. I really appreciate people taking the time to be here tonight and, and learning about this. So... So, all right. So it's been a pleasure to do it. And we look forward, you know, with a little luck to continue to work with you to make this happen. Thank you. And it says, AJ says, thank you all. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, thank everybody. you for everybody. Have a good, Bye -bye. good night. Stay safe. Thank you. Ed, uh, Angie, everybody, and it's uh, nice, thank you. nice to see you all. And, uh, Good night. <laughs> Good night. It was well done. Thank you Good very night. much. Thank you. Good night. All right.